is where we used to film. And we need to do something a little bit different. We wanted a new set, so why not make it according to Alice in Wonderland? This is an Alice in Wonderland inspired theme with a lot of triangles and checkerboards in Alice in Wonderland. I really love those books. So we're going to show you exactly how we did this for this distressed diamond pattern bureau. And I'm going to show you what the room used to look like. Here we go. It was awesome. I love the colors, love the stripes, but they're much too shiny. You need to get rid of that shine and do something just a little different. So here's what the bureau used to look like. I think this maybe a couple years ago to look distressed. I like it. I like it still. But we need something a little bit jazzier for this project. So when you're painting a bureau, Definitely remove your knobs because you don't want to paint around them. You want to do those separately so it comes out to be a lot cleaner and neater. And we're going to give these ones a special treatment anyway. This thing I'm holding in my hand, it's just a random something or other I'm using. Believe it or not, we chose this color because my hair seems to look good next to it. I suppose if you're using it for filming, that would be a good idea to see what color you look good next to. You see the bureau is actually black. We were going to give it a treatment where we were sanding black through, but then we decided not to do it that way. Because we were going to give it a little bit more of a distressed look by sanding it down to the bare wood instead. Now, three times a year, we go to the Brimfield Antique Fair, and it is possibly the largest in the United States or even the world, really. And it is a uh, a week long event and it's massive and it happens three times a year and the reason why I mention it is because they have lots of furniture that looks just like this and it's big money so this is a way that you can re turn a plain old bureau into something really special and unique especially if you have a whole set that you can do in the same style but for this project we have just this one piece So I'm using kind of like a dry brush technique. I don't really have much on the paintbrush. I don't really want to literally uh, have that triangle shape super defined. So anytime I put a layer of paint on here, I'm just kind of dry brushing it on. I have some bronze and some copper. And this pattern, it was actually something that we had bought for the harpsichord project. And I found it, I'm like, oh wow, that'd be perfect. Now when you're doing um, stencils like this, you can get very clean, neat edges. I'm choosing purposely not to, I don't care. I think it actually looks better in this project having kind of uh, messy edges. It kind of goes with a more distressed feeling to it. I'm um, using thinner paint. So if you want it cleaner, you should use definitely a very thick paint and a very dry brush technique, and you'll be able to get those a lot cleaner. You may also need to take down the pattern. I think this is maybe my favorite part of this project. These little uh, designs, I designed this on Photoshop. I just used pictures that I found. I'm 
using here is Mod Podge. It's kind of just like a white glue. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can use a white glue as long as it dries clear. This one is maybe a little higher quality than regular glue, and it also seals it. So if you paint it right over the top, it will dry clear, and it will be durable, very durable. You can wash them afterwards. I love that stuff. When you're screwing these in, you just want to make sure that you have the pictures upright. I think it just looks a little neater that way. And this, this is a really terribly ugly mirror that we bought at a flea market for a dollar or so. And so it's perfect for this project. Uh, you'll see afterwards, I do take the mirror out separately and respray it black. Uh, so that way there's no mirror edges poking through if it doesn't line up exactly. And this is a combination of images that I found and just photoshopping them a little bit to be a little bit different. And I like this technique of ripping near the edge to kind of give it a very soft, diffused edge kind of goes with the whole distressed theme. Gotta have a teacup in there, and gotta have a rabbit. You don't really want to paint this over your carpet. You'll see I put it on that board afterwards because it's like glue. It will, it will not come off your carpet, and then you'll have a little clump of glue on there. So it seals it right up. Uh, like I said, you could you could wipe this down and wash it afterwards if it ever gets dusty. It is a protective layer. And there you go. That's what we made. You can see on the table there I have a, a lamp that my mother made along with a couple of very old Alice in Wonderland books and my new one. And here is the finished product. So I really hope you enjoy this DIY. This actually was pretty simple, something that I feel anybody could do for a little change to their room. And if you like this DIY, please give us a thumbs up. I think this is a uh, type of thing we might be doing pretty often. So if you like this type of video, please let us know, and we'll see you again soon.